Yesterday, basically, every tech site was talking about LastPass because they've decided to basically just nuke their free tier. While it still will exist, it's going to be significantly less useful, basically to the point where there's no reason to keep using the application. Now, if you don't know who LastPass is, I presume if you're watching a video like this, you know who they are, but if you happen to not, basically LastPass is one of the world's most known password managers. I believe they have, like, basic... I believe they have roughly 20 million users. Now, a password manager is an application that bundles together all of your passwords and lets you generate new passwords so you can have completely random passwords on every single service you use. And back in 2015, LastPass was acquired by LogMeIn. Now, this is fairly circumstantial, but I've heard from users who've been using before the acquisition that after the acquisition, the company's sort of been going downhill. Now, what's going to be happening is after March 16th, when a user logs into LastPass, they're going to basically be locking their account to a device category, either computer or mobile. And once they've done this, they have three chances to change it. Once those three chances are up though, LastPass is going to have your account locked to a specific device type. Now what does that actually mean? Well, if your account is locked to computers, then you can only use your LastPass account on your computer, and if it's locked to mobile, then you can only use it on mobile devices. Now as it currently stands before the due date, if you go and set a password on your mobile device, let's say for some app, I don't know, Snapchat or something like that, and then after the due date, you set your account to be a computer account, you won't actually lose that password. The password will then just be associated with the computer account. And the same holds true in reverse, as well as switching device categories as well. So no matter what's going to happen, you won't actually lose any of your passwords. And along with this, which less outlets are covering, is that up until this point, a free LastPass account would actually have access to the email support from LastPass. That's going to be changing though, and only premium or family accounts will have email support. There will still be support for free accounts though, but that's only going to be through the LastPass community, which is basically the LastPass forum, and the LastPass support center, which is just an FAQ. I find this to be far less egregious of a removal, but if I was on the edge of switching anyway, that would probably be enough to push me over. In my case though, I switched from LastPass ages ago, and luckily I did because I use my password vault on both my phone and my computer, and I don't particularly want to have to pay log me in just to access my passwords. Now, I don't know what the LastPass PR team is doing because they're not exactly making it clear to users what exactly is going to be changing because I have come across two statements that basically conflict with each other. The first one is this right here. So although customers are restricted to a single category of devices on the free tier, they'll still be able to view and manage passwords from an unlimited number of devices within either the mobile or computer category. Now, there's two different ways I could go and read that. One of them is that you can go and view your passwords on an unlimited number of devices, but you can only manage in the category that you select. Now, while this is kind of annoying, it's not really that major of a problem. The other way you can read that though, is that you can use your account on an unlimited number of devices, but only within the one category. But in reality, who has that many devices just sitting in one of those categories? In my case, I have a phone, and I have a desktop computer. That's across two categories, and that's two devices. Now, while a sensibly run company wouldn't make this the case, the second does seem to be far more likely. So over on the blog post that LastPass posted along with this update, they posted a couple of examples of what it means to be inside of a category. So let's go with the one for Steve right here. Steve is a free user with mobile devices as his active device type. He can use LastPass on his iPhone, Android work phone, tablet, and smartwatch, but he can't use LastPass on his desktop or laptop unless he upgrades to LastPass Premium, which has unlimited device type access. So the way I understand this is unless he has a premium account, he can't even access his account on something outside of his category. Now, viewing but not managing isn't really a deal breaker because in the end, you can just set your category to one of your devices, just manage them on that device, but still log into devices on the other category. 
The second one, though, makes the app completely useless if you have a free account and multiple device categories. While it still would be pretty dumb, I feel like a better way to address this would, instead of limiting you to a number of device categories, limit you to a number of devices. So let's say that a free account can only have, I don't know, three devices associated with the account at any one time, and then if they want to go and use it on another device, they have to go and authenticate it and just make it a really annoying process so you can't go and just swap it out whenever you want. That would be fine. It would be annoying because other things like Bitwarden don't have that limitation, but it wouldn't be as bad as just breaking the app. I presume it's to counteract the exodus of users, but they're also going to be lowering the price of premium as well. So instead of it being $3 a month, it's going to be $2.25 a month, which if you were a free user and you thought $3 a month was slightly too much and you were thinking of upgrading, but you weren't really sure, maybe that'll make you upgrade. But if you are a free user that had no intention of paying, I don't think that's really going to stop anyone from leaving, especially when it's very easy to go and migrate from LastPass to Bitwarden, which I did do a video on, I think like a year or so ago, and that video has had a kind of a big bump in views. So it seems like some people are definitely trying to leave and go to a different password manager. Now, while it might seem obvious, I think it makes sense to go over what will fall into each category because it's not as obvious as you might think. So, if you set it to the mobile category, any smartphone, smartwatch, and most tablets will fall into this category. So, whether that be an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy or you have a Android watch or a Apple watch anything like that will all fall into the mobile category I didn't realize there was a version of the app for the wearable devices now for the computer category Anything that is a desktop or a laptop regardless of the operating system will fall into this category So whether you're running Windows Linux Mac OS Chrome OS all of those are going to be computer systems. Now, this is where the one weird thing comes out. If you have a Windows tablet, this is going to be considered a computer. Now, I presume the reason why it's like this is because most Windows tablets are just running desktop Windows. So an easier breakdown to go with might be if you're running the browser extension, it's going to be a computer device. If you're using an app, it's going to be a mobile device. Honestly, this is a really bad decision from LastPass's part, and I wouldn't be surprised if before March 16th, they go and remove this change. I don't know who LastPass thinks they are. They're not the only password manager out there, and they're definitely not the only good one out there either. This is a really, really competitive space, and removing features that your competitors have makes absolutely no business sense. Now, while I completely disagree with the change, to be fair to LastPass, they have released a statement explaining why they've actually made this change. So what they said is, this change is part of our increased focus on delivering future premium product improvements as the security landscape continues to evolve in this new era of remote work. Over the coming months and years, users will continue to see additional value and new features added to LastPass Premium in addition to what's included today. A security dashboard, dark web monitoring, secure password and item sharing, a save and fill experience across devices, and dedicated personal support. Now, I can appreciate incentivizing paid accounts and adding new premium features that makes your product stand out. All of those sound like really cool things, and if that's what you want to do to make your company survive, I have no problem with that, but this is where it gets kind of dumb. This update also brings our free solution in line with other leading password managers who have more limitations on their free offerings. Now, I don't know who they think this competition is, because any password manager like that isn't worth using, and so many of them don't have these limitations. For example, we have my personal choice, which is Bitwarden, which you can have installed on as many devices as you want, have one account across all of those devices, and there's no problem using it. And if you do want to go and get the premium version, that gives you things like, say, YubiKey support, it gives you some encrypted storage. I don't really think this part's actually worth it, but the YubiKey support is definitely nice. You get things like emergency access and Vault Health Reports, and also it's cheaper than LastPass. And unlike LastPass, the biggest advantage with Bitwarden is that everything is open source. So they have a link to their GitHub down here, and it's not just say like, 
the browser extension or the desktop app, but the server, the mobile app, the web client, the CLI tool, everything is open source. So if you want to go and modify it and maybe change how it functions, you can go and do that. And because it's open source, you don't just have to believe that Bitwarden is secure. People can go and audit the code base and check, is this actually secure? rather than just relying on the company telling you that their magical black box is never going to be hacked. But if you don't like Bitwarden, The Verge actually did a pretty good article talking about this just after they released their original article. So six free alternatives to LastPass Password Manager. Because even The Verge realizes that LastPass is absolutely lying to them. I haven't tried out most of the options on here, so I can't really give you any recommendations. I do hear good things about KeePass, but I'm not going to suggest that you use it until you try it out for yourself. Now, if you're a more Linux inclined person and you want to do everything yourself, someone is going to complain in the comment section if I don't mention this. I'm looking at you, Hum. There is an application on every Unix system you can use called Pass. And Pass you run locally on your system. It's not stored on a server anywhere. You could put it on a server if you wanted to, but you run it on just your regular system. You go and encrypt everything. And basically it's just a password manager. Now, one of the disadvantages of using something like Pass is it's not as convenient to get it on something like your phone. It can be done by just syncing everything with like a Git repo or something like that. And then you could use something like say, Android Password Store, which is a Android interface for your Pass database. But I haven't tried this out, so I can't say how well it actually works, but if you want to try this out, it might be a good alternative. Just know that it will require a bit more hacking around to get working. If you would like to go down the self-hosting route, one way you can do so is over on Linode. If it runs on Linux, you can run it on Linode. They have the distros you'd expect available like Ubuntu and Debian, but also Arch and Gentoo because why not? They've got multiple server plans available, so whether you want to host a blog or a personal VPN, you know there's going to be one that fits you. Going forward, I'll be using Linode to host all of my community game nights. If you need help, Linode has 24-7, 365 support available by phone regardless of your plan size. So right now, you guys can get started on Linode with $100 credit by going to the link on screen or in the description down below. Linode was in the game three years before Amazon entered cloud computing, so you know they know their stuff. A huge thank you to Linode for sponsoring the channel. Now let me know, if you're a LastPass user and I'm just exaggerating the problem, it's not really going to affect most people, let me know in the comment section why I'm wrong, or maybe you're a LastPass user who agrees with me and you're thinking of switching to something else like say Bitwarden or Pass or whatever it is you want to try out, let me know what you're going to try out and your reasons for it down below. I know my face has been really shiny this episode because it's very hot in this room because my air conditioning is not working, but Hopefully it hasn't been that bad. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Montezar, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Mitchell, PD, Stephen, Tony, Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, them links down below to my... Patreon, subscribe to Libre, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey, Library, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.